So before I begin this video talk about the Moving Forward series for the Chicago Fire, I just want to quickly say that as much as I'm kind of sad the fact that the MLS season is now over and that after last week we had MLS Cup being played, we're now officially into the off season. Though I will say that at least in the off season, it can be as exciting as it is in the MLS season with the way that there's a lot of gossips and rumors that has happened around the MLS world. But, you know, as much as that, that of course, is now over, there is kind of a silver lining with the way that right now we've been he hearing around the sports world and really in, in general in the world itself that uh, we have a new Omicron variant that is going on and it's just creating ha havoc in terms of the world and also in the sports world too with you know other leagues like the NFL, NHL, and NBA all have to postpone the those games and even overseas you know look at all those european soccer league they had times where there's games that's been postponed because there's been numerous teams that had a COVID outbreak and in some way near the end of the mls season especially in the playoffs we kind of saw something similar to that you know the union they also kind of had a COVID outbreak that is going on and it was very unfortunate of that that you know them having a COVID outbreak right when they were about to play the most important game in their friend tries history but what i'm trying to say is is that at least with the way that the season is now over we don't have to worry about talk about whether or not if there's going to be some game that's going to be po postponed because a team has a COVID outbreak now i'm hoping that eventually this this omicron variant is going to be controlled and eventually the cases are going to go down and especially hopefully the sports world would return a little bit more to normal because you know one of the things that i mentioned with this offseason being the shortest offseason in mls history is that there's no guarantee the fact that by the time when we do get get to february 26 like if this does continue and if it's going to t to continue to get worse there is definitely some concern that the the season could could be delayed and that is definitely the last thing i think mls want to do because knowing the fact that they they just cannot afford to have the season being delayed and especially with the way that they just have to finish the season before november knowing the the world cup is going to be happening just one month after the after mls cup is over oh uh, they don't want want the season to be delayed like, like they they did or the season start to be delayed just like what we did last season that the season didn't kick off until april but that being said you know it's kind of out of our hands well it's just kind of almost like a day-to-day -day basis to see how things are going to go but like i said let's just hope things are going to be calmed down eventually and the season will actually start on time on february 26th now that being said uh going back to talk about the chicago fire well you know well the thing thing that they'll be kind of frustrated with the short off season is that they have a lot of work to do this offseason like they basically admitted that after another disappointing year where this was supposed to be the year where they they finished their rebuild and that it seems like they they were able to kind, kind of get through that growing pains of putting in this new new team that was supposed to be be a team that gets them back to being a playoff contender uh last season yeah this year it, it felt like it, it was the same old chicago fire and in some way all those players that they they got that they thought that was supposed to be the core of this team yeah they underachieved massively and it was unsurprised that they decided that you know what we're just gonna blow out we're just gonna start from scratch again and basically go go back into 2020 mode where we're basically just kind of building a, a new team from scratch now uh coming into uh well actually last last season in terms of another massive disappointing year for the chicago fire they finished with a 9 7 and 18 record with 34 points they scored 36 goals this season which is the lowest in the eastern conference i mean i had to double check to see if that is correct but indeed they did score the lowest in the eastern conference which is just remarkable with the way that they have just so much attacking talent on this team and yet they still score fewer goals than fc cincinnati has had this year uh they gave up 54 goals which is not not which is not really that bad but considering the fact that when you can't score goals it doesn't matter how how good your defensive record is is and in this case for the chicago fire it's still kind of like right around around the average or maybe if you're being very cynical you would say that their defense was kind of below average in term, terms of their defensive record and their goal differential of course is minus 18 as they finish 12th in the eastern conference top goal scorer for this team uh robert barrett actually end up 
being the top court goal scored of this team despite the fact that for pretty much the the majority of the the season he was once again that like that snake bit striker that he was in the fir first half of last season and we came into the league and unfortunately you know by the time he did finally gets going it was too late like this team was already kind of out of the playoff picture and in some way the goals that he scored was just kind of, kind of almost like garbage garbage time goals where you know by the then the fire really didn't have had much chances of making the playoffs and you know i guess the only good news is at least he did still finish as the top goal scorer but for a guy that you know last season the breakout year that he has especially in the second half of the season you would expect he should score more than the eight goals that he has and then followed by lucas stojanovic who you know he he was really the only the good attacking player to this team and he, eventually he did unfortunately got bugged by the, the the injury or got bitten by the injury bug and basically once he kind of got back from his injury he was never the same like the, he basically didn't start a, a lot of game for the fire and was kind of just stuck on the bench and then you got you got guys like Alceda who only scored four goals this season it's another disappointing year for for Nacho Alceda a guy that that they really rated they thought that they that he was going to be that number 10 that they thought it was uh then you got Alvaro Madron with three goals and then Shemesh uh, Frankowski who's all, already left this team uh back in the summer transfer window with two goals top assist leader you got Alvaro Madron with six assists followed by Fabian Herberts with four assists they got Boris Seklich with four assists Robert Barrett with three assists and then as I mentioned uh the the departure Shemesh uh, Frankowski in the summer transfer window with free assist to his name so what went right for the chicago fire and really i can't find a lot that i can say that went right for this team in terms of performance wise and th when that happened i kind of had to be a little bit nick picky so i guess you know they, they're going to get a new logo and finally getting rid of that that hideous logo that they've been carrying ever since they decided to rebrand themselves and also also kind of almost embarking a new new air for this team going back to to soldier field and building this this new team that they had and you know it seems like they they completely got got that one wrong with especially the logo itself and that i think mean, thing in the end oh they did the right thing with the way that they eventually did listen t to the fans and say saying that you know what that logo that we we designed it was just a terrible idea and now we we, we of course created a a new one which the new one is definitely much better like the new one i i think is a massive improvement in terms of the one that they they previously created i mean the only disappointment i will say with the new one is the fact that it is another generic circle logo which you know we have had tons of that in mls nowadays but at least with the new logo you know they do do go back to to that that classic c and you know the the color itself it definitely does re represent the city of chicago and part of the the logo that they had basically really is found in the flag of Chicago. And then, of course, the last thing that went right for this, again, I had to be nitpicky, but, you know, I guess they admit that they got, got it wrong in terms of the coaching and player front. And you could maybe even say it on the executive front, too, because Nelson Rodriguez eventually admit that, yeah, he was one of the main re reason of holding this team back. So he decided to step down in September and... Yeah, they're basically blowing it up in in every ways, and pretty much they're they're kind of starting all over again. And it feels like we're back in 2019 all over again, where this was a, a Chicago Fire team with a fresh new team and a fresh new head coach, and also a, a fresh new new uh, general manager to make the decision of this team to see how things are gonna go. So what went wrong with this team? Oh, a lot had had went wrong with this. I mean, first of all. The obvious thing that went went wrong is the inconsistency, which I think this year the inconsistency has gotten even worse. Like in the past, I think the inconsistency for the Chicago Fire is really just the fact that you 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 just don't know what this team is gonna do in every, any given days. Like they could be sometime be be like an MLS Cup Cup contender with some of the performance they put, and there's time where they look like the worst team in the league. And this season, you know, it seems like that inconsistency once again what's happened but what's worse is the fact that they actually did have times where they were on losing streak and that in some way the other thing that i also will say that went wrong with this team go alongside with the inconsistency and i actually didn't put it there on the what went wrong part is the fact that they keep shooting themselves in the foot in some some of the most silly 
biggest mistake we've see, seen a team commit in the league. Like, when you look at most of the game, it's just there's been times where they have looked good, but they just had made one boneheaded mistake, and basically that just kind of caught them the game, which was kind of the same issue that they had last season. And, you know, you would expect that they, after what happened last season, they would kind of learn from their mistake. Uh, nope, it seems like they, they're still kind of like that team that makes that boneheaded decision decision that ultimately cost them all three points uh there's no attacking friend on this team again you know you would think the like likes of robert barish uh aliceta and madron and you have all all these free players that they thought that was going to be the future attacking core of this team you would think that this team should be should have no problem in terms of scoring goals but instead that's just not the case i mean they, they just on most time having a lot of problem in in terms of sub scoring goals and again it's Hence, one of the reason why they also so blow blow up. I mean, they blow up in terms of the whole team, but most of the players that is gone is on the attacking front with guys like Barrett, Alisada, and Madron. Oh, they're all not going to be returning next season. And then, of course, uh, the last thing that went wrong, you know, I mentioned about the core. They massively underachieve, and they kind of underachieve when they came into the league. But I guess maybe the, the first season, they were kind of giving a pass with the way that, you know, they're just, just trying to kind of, kind of sort each other out and, tr and also with the whole co COVID situation it was always going to be tough to try trying to build a team and eventually kind of mesh with each other to build some team chemistry and create a good team but that I don't think there's an excuse about this season with the way that ha once again they still just feel like there's that lack of chemistry with this core and that it and in some way they just once again un underachieve it and there's really no excuse this time of, of why they they have underachieved so so much and not have got to the level that they were supposed to be when they built this team back in 2019. So moving forward for this team, well, again, it's a rebuild for them. It's rebuild 2.0, which means that I expect there's going to be a lot of signings that the Chicago Fire is going to make, especially on the attacking front, which I'm actually going to be jumping into the last part, part of the moving forward for them is that how will this remake fire team would look like like when you know with all the these moves that they're going to be making this offseason i'm going to be interested to see how the starting 11 is going to be because i guarantee you that that starting 11 on february 26 in their season opener is going to be the complete different starting 11 that we've seen seen with the chicago fire team and you know when you go for an off season with with so many changes like that you know sometimes it's necessary and i think in this case it was necessary with the way that i didn't think with with this current core that have massively underachieved in, in the first two seasons it was you know it you, you need to have a lot of trust if they can maybe get it right the third time and it's pretty clear that this fire front office didn't think that that is going to be the case but at the same time you know the dangers of also making so many moves like them is what we saw in that chicago fire team in 2020 where you know it, they almost like, looked like an expansion team with just so many new players coming into the team and that maybe the chemistry of the team won't be developed until like in the middle of the season so expect you know as much as i know fire fans are excited about the new logo and also the way that they're, they're going to go go through another remake and hopefully this the third time is going to be fine well i wouldn't say the third time the second time is going to be happening because this is the second attempt of them trying to get themselves competitive ever since they of course got a new new president and also so a, a new head coach in there but you know again uh they hope that the second time is going to work well but just know that it's not going to be a very smooth transition and that it's going to take time for this team to really get things going and that is also where i bring into the last point of the moving forward series is israel Hendrickson. so we know Hendrickson is a guy that's been the on the radar of being an mls head coach i mean last year his name was definitely popped up um in the mls head co coach search especially in in the D dc united candidate pool where i talk about how dc went through this long period where they were just scouting of who exactly is the next head coach and israel Hendrickson was one of the possibility to be be that head coach but ultimately they did not pick him and now he's going to finally get get a shot and you know a guy that is very respectable in mls being a very good good assistant head coach with the columbus crew and was also on that with winning mls cup team in 2020 so yeah they they hope that the the fire will get get a guy that has been been an mls cup winner albeit in an assistant level they can make the step to to be a head coach and do the same thing although 
that doesn't always work out because we've seen before where even though some assistant head coach have, have done well in in their role with a successful team when they do make the jump to go to to a less successful team but now they are the head coach that could be a, a challenge challenging feat to do so it's going to be interesting to see how er Ezra Henriksen is going to do and I expect he's going to also feel some pressure too because you know the Chicago Fire fan base which you know I think this fan ba base it has a lot of potential I mean I know that a lot of people have talked about how how this how this fire fan base isn't really that that good with the way way that most ga games at Soldier Field you see a bunch of empty seats and the way that they play play at Soldier Field feels like it's a very MLS 1.0 vibe when you know back in the early 2000s uh, we seen MLS team playing in Cavalier State Stadium and just in front of empty crowd but you know there's potential that they, this fan base can get signed and you've seen late in the season where you know they, there was one game where so they, they had 30,000 in at Soldier Field, and albeit yes, that was kind of a fan appreciation day, and they they were kind of unviewing their their new logo. So there's a lot of excitement. But if if there's one way to maybe get this this fan base excited, and maybe we'll see in the future that Soldier Field is going to be a little bit more more pack is winning because winning definitely will bring bring the fans. And you you know we we've seen before where t when the most successful team in the league, it's unsurprising that they'll though that those are usually the stadium that it it is usually going to be packed and i remember when this team was winning back in 2017 and when they were were able to finish i think third in in the eastern conference though at times they were actually at the top of the eastern conference you can see that 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 stadium at seeky stadium bridgewell it was actually pa packed for mo most of these games so this is just a team that i think if they can finally get some win winning some belief and finally get themselves back into the the playoffs which this is also another team that has not been in the playoffs a lot they missed the playoffs 10 out of their last 12 season then yeah i, I would expect this th there's going to be more fans that's going to be attending this game and we'll we'll see whether or not if israel hendrickson is going to be finally the answer but either way hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys see a like smash the subscribe button let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and if you're a chicago fire fan what went right, what went wrong, and most importantly, moving forward, how is this team going to look now that they're once again going through another their rebuild and another transitional p period? But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.